Hello, my friends. So many choices. A search for the truth, church. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, please cleanse us from all our righteousness. Please lead us, Lord, as we study your word. Help us to find the truth, church, and to identify the truth, church. Bless my viewers and listeners, Lord. Send your Holy Spirit on me, Lord, as I teach them, as they listen and they watch. Give us wisdom and understanding to do your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let us see how to search for the true church. Have you ever wondered why there are so many other de different denominations? Why are they? Where did they all come from? How can we find the truth? It seems to be so confusing. Listen, my friend, God isn't wanting us to be confused. In His Word, He has made the important message of salvation so simple. He wants us to know how much He loves us. In case we didn't understand the messages, He sent through His prophets, He sent His own Son to show us His character. The way Jesus lived, the teachings He shared, the religion He promoted and He founded are the clearest representation of love and character of God. Unfortunately, the religious world has forgotten much of what Jesus taught and how He lived. The character of God is often misrepresented even by Christians today. But we need not be frustrated by the religious confusion that is so prevalent. We are going to study God's word for answers. Amos 3.7 says, Surely the Lord does nothing. The Bible says, Unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophet. Amos 3.7 We are going to discover the origin of the religious confusions we see around us. It doesn't matter what I think or what you think. What matters is what the Bible says. If it is the will of the Bible, if it is in the Bible, believe it. Let's start our study in the last book of the Bible, Revelation. In chapter 6, we read about four horsemen. Each of these four horsemen represent different periods of time in the history of the Christian church. By studying these distinct periods which the Bible describes, we can understand the development of the different churches we see around us today. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, Revelation 6, 1, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a loud voice, like thunder, come and see. And I looked and behold, a white horse. He sat on it. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering to conquer. During the first period of church history, the church is described as a conquering faith. It is riding like a white horse, symbolized a pure faith. It would have been thrilling to live in the first century, right after Jesus rose up to heaven. The disciples were filled with so much courage and so much faith because they had walked and talked with Jesus. They had seen their resurrected Lord. They had watched Him ascend into the heavens. They believed His promise that He was coming back. They believed His words with all their heart. Remarkably, they shared the good news, the gospel, with great energy and enthusiasm with the entire world. Paul prayed that the Colossian believers would not be moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which Paul, I, Paul, became a minister, Colossians 1.23. The apostolic church was a growing church, and believers were increasingly added to the Lord. Multitudes of both men and women, Acts 5.14. The Bible records how thousands were baptized and the church continued to grow. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved, Acts 24, 47. Through baptism, men and women became part of the body of Christ, His church. The faith of the apostolic church was a pure faith, untainted by human tradition or pressures. When threatened by Jewish leaders, Peter, Peter and the other apostles answered and said, Acts 5.29 we ought to obey God rather than men. Acts 5.29 They had a pure faith because they had been with Jesus. They believed what Jesus believed. They taught what Jesus taught. They lived like Jesus lived. 
That is the kind of faith we need to have today. A simple, pure faith. That is the faith of Jesus. A faith that is passionate about spreading the good news of salvation to all our friends and neighbors and to the entire world as Jesus had commissioned us to do. That is the pure faith of the believers in the first century. This pure, conquering faith of the early church was represented by the white horse. This pure church of the apostles ended in AD 100. What did John see when Jesus opened the second seal? Another horse, fiery red, went out and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth and that the people should kill one another and there was given to him a great sword, Revelation 6, 4. Here we have represented a blood-stained faith. We know that after AD 100, Christians began to be severely persecuted in the Roman Empire. Many were killed and the death of some were used as entertainment in the Greek Colosseums of Rome. What a terrible time for a Christian church. But still, the church grew. One historian, church historian of the time said that it seemed that the blood of Christians was like seed as people died and gave their lives for Jesus, more were converted to take their place as followers of Jesus. The good news of salvation spread across the Roman Empire. So the red horse represents a blood-stained faith. It represents the Christian church from AD 100 to AD 323. Now Jesus opened the third seal, the third era of the Christian church. When he opened the third seal, I heard the I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, his, he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. It's Revelation 6, 5. This black horse represents a compromised faith. The Apostle Paul wrote, For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Acts 20, 29 to 30. This was a very sad time in the Christian church. It was a time of compromised faith when paganism was united with Christianity. The prophet Daniel had also predicted this. Because of transgression, an army was given over to the horn to oppose the daily sacrifices and he cast the truth down to the ground and he did all this and prospered daniel 8 12. the first major truth lost this in this period was the understanding of salvation by faith alone in jesus faith in jesus was gradually replaced by an outward compliance with the sacraments and requirements of the church salvation according to the bible is a free gift it has to be a gift because we all have sin and we don't deserve eternal life. We deserve to die because the wages of sin is death. But God gives us the free offer of eternal life. To receive that gift, we must all do what all must we do is invite Jesus to our hearts. Then he forgives us of all our sins and gives us power to overcome our old sinful habits. This gives us a new heart and enables us to walk in his footsteps. But this simple truth of salvation, this simple faith in Jesus was compromised when church replaced what the Bible teaches with man-made requirements and traditions. Even though Jesus offers freely, pardon freely, Christians were told they needed to pay to have their sins forgiven. The Bible says, if we confess our sins, 1 John 1, 9, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yet, Christians were told that they had to go to a human priest and confess their sins. They weren't taught to go boldly directly to the throne of God in prayer. And people accepted these man-made teachings because they didn't have Bibles to study for themselves. The Word of God was actually outlawed in the common languages of the people. Before the invention of the printing press, even small portions of Bible or the Bible were difficult to find. The Christian faith became corrupt as people simply accepted what they were told they should believe. 
Another Bible truth that was compromised had to do with worshiping created objects rather than the Creator Himself. God says in the Ten Commandments, You shall not make, Exodus 24 and 5, You shall not make for yourselves a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers to the children to the four, third and fourth generations of those who hate me. When this commandment was forgotten or ignored, those images and icons began to be used in the worship of God right inside the church itself. A third Bible truth compromised during the time, this time period had to do with the fourth commandment. The day of worship. Notice that Daniel said, he, as he saw in this period, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me, Daniel 7.15. During this time of compromised faith, tradition and human ideas replaced God's word. The first Christian emperor, Roman emperor, Constantine, declared in AD 1 that Christians should observe the popular weekly holiday of the pagans, Sunday, Instead of keeping the Bible Sabbath, somehow, over the time, the church actually accepted this change of the day of worship and even endorsed it. On May 21, 1995, a newspaper, a newsletter in St. Catherine Catholic Church accurately gave this observation. Perhaps the boldest thing that most revolutionarily changed the church ever did happened in the first century. The Holy Day Sabbath, the Sabbath was changed from Saturday to Sunday, not from any directions noted in the scripture, but from the church's sense of its own power. People who think that the scripture should be the sole authority should logically become Seventh-day Adventists and keep Saturday Holy. That's from St. Catherine's Catholic Church, Sentinel, May 21, 1995. The observance of Sunday as God's holiday is not in the Bible. It was during the era of the black horse, the compromised faith, that the day which God made holy was forgotten and replaced by Sunday. Millions have kept Sunday without knowing any better. But today, we are faced with a choice between following tradition or following God's commandments. For in six days, Exodus 20, 11 says, The Lord made heavens and earth, the sea and all that in the midst, and rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. If God blessed a day, if he had made one of the seven holy, then we have no right and no power to change what he has done. It becomes an issue of worship, as issue of obedience. The question is, will we follow man's tradition or do what God has commanded? This, then, is the period of the compromised faith. The black horse represents the church during the period AD 323 and AD 538. Now, we turn our eyes to the fourth period of the Christian church, which was represented by a pale horse. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. Revelation 6, 7, and 8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death. And Hades, Hades followed with him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. Revelation 6, 7, and 8. A dead faith is represented by the fourth seal. It was a time when the church was so spiritually dead that it relied upon the power of civil government to wield influence and power. The church became both a religious and a political power. Church, church and state were were reunited. Notice this observation. Christianity became an established religion in the Roman Empire and took the place of paganism. Christianity, as it existed in the Dark Ages, might be termed baptized paganism. Church History, Century 2, Chapter 2, Section 7. Remember, during this time, people did not have access to God's Word. It was actually against the law of the land, as we have noted, 
the printing press was not yet invented. Without access to the Bible, people followed traditions which they had become comfortable with. This was a time of compromise. Those who did not try to follow the teachings and practices of Jesus were often persecuted, even persecuted by the church. This is why this period is sometimes referred to as the Dark Ages. An estimated of 50 million believers were put to death just for daring to be differently about religion than the official stand church said they should think. Spiritually, it was, this, it was dark as the light of God's word was covered by human traditions. Buying forgiveness for sins through penance and indulgences replaced free salvation offered by the grace of Jesus Christ. Pagan theories of the afterlife, including the, area, the idea of purgatory, became accepted as fact. There is no description of purgatory in the Bible, yet it became a doctrine of the church. Would God's truth be forgotten forever? Not a chance. God, the God of love, was still sustaining his faithful believers. Though they were scattered and in hiding, the light of the truth would again pierce through the darkness. That flame of truth was kept alive by the Waldensian believers in the Cotian Alps of North Italy. In the early centuries of the Christian faith, these people possessed the scriptures in their native tongue, car though carrying a Bible would have been punishable by death, these Waldensians would write out portions of the scriptures by hand and sew them in their garments. When they met someone who they perceived was hungering for spiritual truth, they would share these small passages to them. Their children took God's word to the universities of Europe, and these illegal passages of the Bible changed lives and hearts. Many of the missionaries were caught and put to death, but Waldensians considered it a privilege to sacrifice themselves for the cause of Christ. The scriptures they shared were the seeds that one day would bloom openly in what we call as the Protestant Reformation. After the Waldensians, there came a reformer, Jan Hus, along with his friend Jerome, has discovered that it was more important to obey God than it is to obey human traditions, even those taught by the church. Because of their stand for the word of God and the refusal to follow church traditions, they were burned at the stake in Prague. Their ashes were cast into the river that flowed into the Mediterranean Sea. Their ashes were like seeds, however, and the Reformation continued to grow. After Haas and Jerome, a German monk named Martin Luther discovered the Bible truth of salvation by grace alone. Some people ask, why didn't Haas and Jerome and Luther discover all the truths that had been lost during the Dark Ages? They didn't. Because change often takes time. It's difficult to recognize the errors in your own thinking. Even the disciples of Jesus were not able to comprehend, comprehend everything at once. Jesus said to them, I still have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. John 16, 12. Rediscovering Bible truths was a process. It took hundreds of years to lose the faith of Jesus during the Dark Ages, and it would take years to regain rediscover this truth. When Luther, Luther died, his followers took what he said and formed the Lutheran Church. For them, the Reformation stopped at Luther's death. Far away from Luther's Germany in Geneva, Switzerland, John Calvin was an amazing Bible scholar who discovered for himself many of the same truths Luther had learned from God's Word. He began preaching these Bible truths to those who spoke French in the region. When he died, his followers took what he had taught and formed the Presbyterian, the Presbyterian and the other Calvinist or Reformed churches. For them, the Reformation stopped with Calvin's teaching. About this time, there were a people scattered throughout Northern Europe who concluded from their Bible study that Christians should be baptized by immersion as adults instead of being sprinkled by the priest as children. As children. They were scornfully called Anabaptists, baptism by immersion being put all the way under the water as Jesus was in another teaching of Jesus, is another teaching of Jesus that had been lost sight of during the Dark Ages. It symbolizes 
our old way of life is dead and buried and a new person is rising to be alive with God. Or do you not know, Romans 6, 3 or 4, that as many of us as were baptized in Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life, Romans 6, 3 and 4. Of course, baptism is only an outward sign of an inward relationship with Jesus. The Anabaptists were only following the teaching of the Savior. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Matthew 28, 18 and 19. Jesus gave the commission to his church to go and teach and baptize and make disciples. The Anabaptists were obeying and fulfilling that commission as we do today. Many of them lost their lives because they refused to sprinkle their infants and because those who had been baptized by sprinkling as infants chose to be rebaptized by immersion as adults. From this faithful beginning, however, the various Baptist denominations were formed. You see, each of these reformers was discovering truths which had been lost during the Dark Ages, but their followers tended to stop the process of discovery when the reformers died and codified their beliefs into what would become a new denomination. In England, John Wesley began to study his Bible. He discovered the Bible teaching of sanctification and that those believers who are saved freely with the grace of Jesus Christ may, by the same grace and power, live changed life. John Wesley was a great reformer and when he died, his followers formed the Methodist Methodist Church. Why did these men and women leave their former traditions and comfortable churches in order to pioneer new church teachings? Churches teaching the truth they discovered? Because they loved Jesus. As Jesus' followers, they wanted to believe Jesus what Jesus believed and teach what Jesus taught. His love for them had so won their hearts that they wanted to follow him and his word wherever the truth would lead them. A new movement began to spread around the world in South America, Europe, North America. People began to study the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. A Baptist farmer in the United States, William Miller, began to be convicted that Jesus was coming soon. Miller had come to believe in the Bible as God's word as did the wild dances. He believed in obedience like John Huss, in salvation by grace like Martin Luther, in adult baptism by immersion like the Anabaptists and in sanctification by John Wesley. And to the great discoveries made by these reformers, William Miller added another important Bible teaching, the nearness of Jesus' second coming. After Miller, great second Advent movement, he founded, continued rediscovering truth from the Word of God. His friends uncovered the long-forgotten truth that when people die, they fall asleep in Jesus, awaiting the resurrection. The early Adventists began teaching that, number one, death is asleep. Number two, Jesus is coming soon. Number three, Christ will resurrect the righteous dead at the second coming. This agrees with the Paul teaching and the early church taught. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of love, an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 The Adventists also discovered that the day that the Christian world was observing was based on human tradition rather than the word of God. The blessing God conferred on the seventh day had never been transferred to another because they loved Jesus. These Adventists wanted to keep all his commandments. For hadn't Jesus said, in vain do they worship me, teaching that the, as, doc, as doctrines the commandments of men, Matthew 15, 9. How easy is it to follow tradition and forget God's instructions? But Jesus didn't call us to live the easy life. He called us to be faithful. What really matters is, God, is what God says. And when it comes to worship, we must worship God on the Sabbath day that he has set apart for us. The Sabbath is a beautiful gift of rest and relationship. As this spiritual Sabbath uh, truths 
were rediscovered in the Bible. The people studying these truths eventually formed the Seventh-day Adventist Church. They keep the fourth commandment and worship God on the Seventh-day Sabbath. What can we see is that for every truth which Jesus taught, taught man has come up with a counterfeit tradition. God gave us the gift of the Seventh-day Sabbath with his blessed hours. Satan has led men to make a counterfeit day of worship, Sunday. God has says when we die, we sleep in the grave. That's the truth according to the scripture. The counterfeit is that we, may, we go to heaven or hell or purgatory during a, at death. Jesus gave us the example of adult baptism by immersion. Tradition says it's okay to be sprinkled as infants. God gave us health principles and dietary laws to live by. Satan's deception is that the health principles of the Bible were abolished. For every truth, there is a counterfeit. And all that these counterfeits are was to create confusion. The book of Revelation talks about the religious confusion that exists today, that we can see all around us. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon is great, is fallen. Babylon the great is fallen and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hated bird. Revelation 18, 2. The root of the word Babylon has the meaning of confusion and how accurately it describes end-time Christianity with its many different denominations. But God doesn't want us to stay in confusion. So he calls his people out of Babylon. Revelation 18, 4. And I heard another verse from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you receive her plagues. Aren't you glad Jesus, God loves us enough to call us out of religious confusion and into the truths of his word? Don't you want to be a Jesus follower today? Friends, Jesus is calling you for you now. Now is the time to stand for Jesus. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for all the revivals that happened. Thank you for bringing back the truth to the church. Thank you for founding the Seventh-day Adventist Church, embracing all the truths from the Bible. Help us, Lord, to be faithful to all the truths that we know and to share it with everyone we encounter. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Please bless the viewers and the listeners of this video. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.